Hi guys, we have to talk about California again because the anomalies continue. So the state of California, and I mean the San Andreas Fault because that's where it is all appearing and that's why it is so concerning, guys. California was hit with three earthquakes in less than 24 hours and that is concerning guys if you're watching my channel on a regular basis, you've probably seen the last video where i go in depth along the san andreas fault what happens if the southern end erupts and how travel how fast will the waves travel how big will the damage be and what will happen where so check out this video but let's talk about the recent three earthquakes in less than 24 hours. So the largest was a magnitude 3.0 quake that hit California four miles west of Walker. That's, you see this here on the map, um, in the afternoon at 12.33 local time. And then at 5.40 in the evening, California suffered another blow as a 2.6 magnitude earthquake hit two miles east of Pacheco. See the map again here. So still, they consider these seismic events to be minor so that they don't cause any damage. But the location and where they are, that's what makes those earthquakes more significant and also the fact that it's three in one day. So the residents in the nearby areas, especially very close to the epicenters, they have reported that they did feel the ground shake, but so far, thankfully, no damages or injuries have been reported. And you know, this is not why these earthquakes are so meaningful. Um, and that's not why I report about them, not because of potential injuries or damages, but what this could mean for the probability of the San Andreas Fault to erupt. So we'll go into this because this, as I just said, it scares me a little bit. And there are scientists that are saying we could see the big one this year in California. I mean, this year, we have early October. There's not much time left for this year. The 2.9 magnitude quake that happened near Barstow, on the other hand, residents have not reported that they really felt a lot of shaking. But there are two reports from two people, one in Glenbrook in Nevada and another one in Martinez, California. They reported feeling weak tremors when the 3.0 magnitude earthquake um, struck near Walker. So the quirk, so this 3.0 quake occurred along the Walker Lane. That is a 625 mile long corridor and that is riddled with hundreds of earthquake faults, basically, and it, it runs up and down the border between California and Nevada. So that's where this one was located. So 16 people have reported that they felt weak tremors when the 2.6 magnitude struck near Pacheco. But all those other people that reported shaking were located actually in California. Nine people reporting from Martinez, three from Pleasant Hill, two from Concord, and one from Walnut Creek, and one from Folsom. So this quake occurred along the San Andreas Fault, and that's why it's so significant. That's the 2.6. Um, the San Andreas Fault, that is the volatile boundary between two tectonic plates that are sliding alongside of each other. That's the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. And the San Andreas Fault runs at a length of 800 miles along the coast of California. You can see it here on the map, basically from San Diego up to the very north of California. And you, if that ruptures, you could even feel it in Southern Oregon. 
So Southern Oregon and Northern California, they don't have it too great because they will also be affected if the really big one hits the Cascadia Fault. Because right where the basically San Andreas Fault ends, we have the Cascadia Fault starting and that could create magnitude 9 really, really devastating. So these tectonic plates that meet at the San Andreas Fault, they're large solid pieces of the Earth's crust that basically they move independently from each other. Right now, and that's the problem, both plates are locked. Both sections of the San Andreas Fault are locked. Like the southern and the northern sections are locked. So what does that mean? That means friction has caused the North American and the Pacific plates to stick together along these locked points, along these proportions of their boundary. And then it's building up stress, right? And if this all of a sudden releases, then we have a problem. Why do we have a problem? Because when that stored energy releases, it releases suddenly, right? And that sends shock waves that travel through the Earth's crust and they can cause a big, big, devastating earthquake. What's the likelihood of the southern end eruption, erupting or the northern end erupting? Both sections of the San Andreas Fault basically have roughly an equal likelihood of generating a high magnitude earthquake in the next few decades or tomorrow. Scientists think that the southern part will rupture first. So check out my video about that. It's mind blowing how far these earthquake waves travel and they reach LA and what they do to LA because LA is located in a basin that is basically called like a jello pot. That's, that's how shaky the ground underneath soft it is already so this can magnify the earthquake waves and make it even worse for LA. The San Andreas Fault is widely known, right? Everyone connects it with California. There's movies about it, the big one. So everyone knows that this fault has the potential to unleash something very, very bad. They also call it the big one, right? Uh, it's a hypothetical but it will happen, a high magnitude earthquake that will one day occur along this fault. They say it's overdue and they think the likelihood is increasing. So researchers have estimated that that quake could roughly cause the loss of 1,800 people, 50,000 injuries, and more than 200 billion in damages. But there's many scientists that say these numbers are not accurate and you have to multiply them. And I also think that 1,800 losses, I don't think that's accurate. I think it will be way, way more. Um, we know that the scientists are not able to predict earthquakes, but they have warned for a very, very long time about the, the fact that the big one here in California is inevitable. It will happen. And California is in a so-called earthquake drought right now. So people keep forgetting that usually there is more and on a regular basis, heavy, heavy earthquakes. For decades, basically, it's been sort of quiet, right? So people tend to forget about the risk because it, the, the earth doesn't remind them on a constant base how bad it could be. So I just said California is overdue. Major earthquakes in California typically occur there every 150 to 200 years. But the San Andreas Fault hasn't had one in over three centuries. So if you look at the past, you can see it and how the rocks are formed and what has happened. You can make pretty accurate predictions in what the intervals were when these earthquakes happened. So this is heavily overdue. And why are people so worried? The problem is that California has seen an uptick in seismic activity in the recent weeks. And that is, of course, firing up the fears of the big one coming. And plus, 
last month, California has broken the record for the most magnitude, like above magnitude four earthquakes in a single year. And plus last month, California has broken the record for the most magnitude, like above magnitude four earthquakes in a single year. And the year is not even over yet, right? Um, for example, we had a 4.7 earthquake that was hitting Malibu, right? And also five aftershocks came with that one that was hitting Malibu as well. And um, that was the 14th magnitude four or higher earthquake in Southern California this year. And many scientists are saying in order to receive a magnitude five or higher, um, smaller ones occur. So you have a certain number of magnitude fours before it goes up to a higher level. So that could be an indication that something bigger is coming. And not like many people think, oh, the more earthquakes we have, um, the more stress it releases, and then the big one will not be so big or will not come. Nope, it could be the opposite. And that's also valid for the Cascadia Fault. And, you know, what is the normal range of earthquakes magnitude four or higher in California? That's about eight per year. Now we have already 14. So the USGS, the US Geological Survey, um, one of their seismologists said it is a heightened activity, but it is they can't confirm that this is a sure sign that the big one is coming. Again, they know that they don't know. They can only estimate. So the scientists, the USGS scientists, USGS scientists said, um, these numbers are not yet, and listen to, not yet statistically significant, but they could become, right? Meaning that experts can't be sure whether the increase is part of a larger trend or just a blip. They need more time and I guess more needs to happen. But if it is, something bad could happen before the scientists have all their statistical data ready, right? I mean, look at the world, how many earthquakes, tsunamis happen as a complete surprise. Same with volcanic eruptions. And of course, that's why the USGS says scientists can't infer any information about the big one from these latest quakes. Of course, they need to be careful what they're saying, but they're saying advancements in earthquake forecasting could eventually help to narrow down a timeline from for when it might strike. Well, then you should better advance very, very quickly, I think. I think it's urgent. But one thing is for sure, scientists and people that live in California, um, what they feel, and it's also a reality, that not only these three quakes that occurred in only 24 hours, um, but also what is happening this year. California is experiencing an unusual year of seismic activity. That is definitely clear. So we will have to keep an eye on this, right? If you are in California, be prepared for an earthquake, have enough water, a bug out bag, have your papers with you or whatever you need, right? Look where, if you're in your home, where could you do duck and cover? That's the most important thing, right? Most people get injured when they're trying to running somewhere else. They're even saying if you're sleeping in bed and the earthquake hits you, stay where you are because mostly people get injured when everything's shaking and they're trying to run somewhere else. And then, especially in downtown areas, if then after the first shock, people are trying to run around or outside, they get hit by something that's falling off the buildings, like falling glass, falling shingles, falling stucco, falling parts. So that's when most the injuries occur, not during the shaking. So be aware of that. If you need to run out of your building, find an exit where you think not too much could hit you because there will be aftershocks, right? You have to be considerate of that. And uh, yeah, let's just hope and pray that, uh, I don't want to say it won't happen because we know it will. Just if it does, that it's, it's well, even that I can't say that it's not going to be so bad, right? 
that it happens at a time, maybe hopefully some decades out, when there's even more earthquake preparedness, more buildings seismically upgraded and stuff like this. And maybe the science has progressed to a point where they can give us more warning time. There are warning systems in place um, that might be able to give us one to three seconds or something like this. They have just installed one in British Columbia. Um, so at least that, I don't know if you have a hot cup of coffee, you can put it down so that, I don't know, but it's a little bit, right? So stay tuned, guys. Check out the other videos here. They're really, really interesting. So like this video, subscribe, and check out the links in the description. You can become a member of my channel. I would love to have you join and see you there and share more private behind the scenes insights in what I'm doing, my farm and my life. And of course, on my Buy Me A Coffee site. And thanks so much for the supers. You're supporting this channel in the greatest way. I'm, I'm really, really grateful and I hope to see you very soon. Stay safe, guys. Be prepared. Bye-bye.